All right, welcome back to Bigfoot's Wilderness. Before we uh, start the encounter story, I just wanted to remind everyone that next week we'll announce a winner for the coffee mug. So if you haven't registered for a chance to win, now is the time. I'll include the link in the description box to register. So check it out. Also, I now offer t-shirts, sweatshirts, coffee mugs with a great design and the shirts are great quality and there's lots of color options. So I'll also post that link in the description. Thanks for your support and let's get into the story. It's called The Reality of Bigfoot. Ever since the kids were little, my wife and I wanted to take them camping. The beginning of fall was always our favorite time. In the beginning, when our sons were so little, I have to admit it was a hectic situation with crying babies, changing diapers, feeding, and yet still trying to enjoy the great outdoors. I still think to this day that we made several campers bug out and leave with all of our antics. I used to tell my wife how much I loved fishing and looked forward to the fishing when in reality I'd catch up on some sleep and rarely bring a fish back. And I was certainly no authority on camping, but as the years went by, I was pretty good at faking it. With four growing boys, one of the smartest decisions we could make was purchasing a giant SUV to hold everything and everyone. We bought a used Ford Expedition, which also allowed us some creature comforts. I remember on one particular morning, I guess we hadn't planned appropriately, as the weather turned and we got a little snow. Temperatures dropped, and the truck could hold all of us for a few hours of good quality sleep. As long as it wasn't completely loaded down with equipment, that is. We always tried to get the same campsite each and every year. It was a beautiful location with nearby mountain views and fantastic hiking trails. We really enjoyed our time outdoors, that is, up until the encounter. Linville Gorge is absolutely beautiful and one of the largest wilderness areas in North Carolina. It goes by many names, but I call it the Wilderness Gorge. It resides inside the Pisgah National Forest. It's also a prime habitat for wildlife and I do mean wildlife. All week long, we saw tons of squirrel, raccoon, turkey, and even observed a herd of deer that were fairly close to our campsite. But we also saw something that wasn't on any wildlife list, and it made a mark on me about what I believed to be inhabiting the forests of the gorge. It was a great week with lots of hikes, bike rides, and as I mentioned earlier, about the occasional fishing trip. We'd started later than others packing up since we weren't in a rush and lived a few short hours away in Charlotte. We just wanted to soak in the experience a little bit longer and take one last hike. We were about half packed and finishing up lunch when I suggested a last hike which everybody seemed to be up for. This particular hiking trail we traveled would take us deeper into the gorge and I was less familiar with it. We're a pretty big troop whenever we go somewhere, typically sounding like a small army when entering a venue. I probably wouldn't have noticed if it were commonplace, but my four boys, ages 10 through 18, were always loud. I enjoyed the silence for as long as it would last. Probably 200 yards down the trail, we all saw what we thought was a huge bear, and it exited from the brush on our left and then quickly moved to the right, crashing through brush on the other side. This bear was not only massive, but walked on its hind legs and stood probably eight feet tall at least. My brain as well as my eyes said bear, but even though its coat resembled that of a bear, Nothing in this gorge or even on the eastern seaboard upon reflection had bear this big. I was at the lead and probably had the best and longest visual. I work in the health studies field, studying biology in college, and the physiology of this animal was certainly not a bear, and I can safely make that claim because of several features that stand out. Its hair seemed to be short, and it had big, massive shoulders and ears on the sides of its head, not on top of its head. 
In that respect, it looked nothing like a bear. Even at about 50 feet, I could tell it was hunching over and traveled upright on two feet as it grasped nearby trees. It was interested in us, and it kept watch as it moved around freely. Upon seeing it, I recall instinctively throwing my hands out like I was stopping anyone from coming past me. No one was talking, and I think their eyes were as big as saucers, just like mine. My youngest, the ten-year-old, had decided he'd had enough and began to run back down the trail from where we came. I yelled his name to stop, but he just kept running. Seems as though he wasn't glued to the ground like the rest of us. I was worried he'd lose us if he went too far. When that creature in the woods noticed him and began to give chase, almost like it triggered the prey drive instinct. Everything seemed to be moving in slow motion, although it couldn't have been more than a few seconds. I yelled at my oldest, who was closest down the path. I pointed and said, Get him! I could see what my oldest couldn't, and I couldn't just stand there and watch it all play out. I'm big in stature, but not in an athletic way. I'm overweight, by a lot. As a matter of fact, I couldn't remember the last time I ran at a fast clip. But today, at this moment, when I needed it, I ran. It must have been quite a burst of adrenaline because I caught up to my oldest and then my youngest and tackled him to the ground. He was crying now, hugging on me, with a strong grip. I looked at my other son next to me and we all looked toward the woods. Just yards away, it had come to a stop and then backed away, partially hidden by a cluster of trees. It was hard to hear over my own heartbeat pulsing in my ears. My wife and other sons gathered together with us and we walked slowly down the trail. Everyone had tears in their eyes, including myself. I didn't own a gun and have never hunted. I was never in the military. I didn't study psychology or anything that I can think of that would help prepare me for this very strange and bizarre experience. All I had was the instinct to protect my loved ones. As we put some more distance between us further down the trail, I made sure everyone moved ahead of me. Even though I was breathing so hard, I could swear I heard a deep grumble or maybe even some form of language coming from those trees. I kept checking back on its whereabouts and thankfully, I could still see its head and shoulders over by the cluster of trees. It was that big. It didn't leave and it didn't take its eyes off of us, especially me. Picture in your head a silverback gorilla's broad body with a Neanderthal man's face, black eyes, and a gray face, but double in size. That is what I saw. Twenty years later, my kids still remember the encounter. Most of them say it was Bigfoot, but at the time, I really didn't know what it was. I'm Chinese American, and in China, there's a similar legend of a wild man known as a Yeren. Since my sighting, I've done some research to compare notes to my family's experience. The Yeren also has a rich history and dates back over 2,000 years. These creatures have similar traits, and I now agree with my kids that it must have been a Sasquatch. I haven't shared this story outside my family, except for one person, my best friend. It isn't something we've talked about much, but a surprising revelation was made by one of the children to me just recently. By the way, I want to protect the identities of my family, so thank you for your consideration. One of the main reasons I'm sharing this with you, Mike, is that after a recent discussion with one of my children, he mentioned a bone pile that was, from what he says, a few feet behind our tent that fall that same year. He said he showed his brothers, but they were clueless. They even sifted through some of the bones. He thought it was really cool, but never mentioned it to me. We purposefully placed our tent close to some trees for protection from the elements if we were to have any kind of wind or weather. I do recall some strange noises, but I dismiss them as anything, since whenever I would get up to investigate, it would stop. I never connected the two together. I actually don't know if they are connected. 
but it does seem to be a very strange coincidence. Since the late 90s, we haven't gone camping in the Burke County area since. It seems that if all the reports are substantiated, there are even more Bigfoot sightings an hour from my home of Charlotte in the Uwari National Forest. All these years later, we still camp with my children, and now their children, but in a much more public area and local. We don't seek to have another encounter, but I have gone to Uwari to hike and just look around. My wife is against it. She thinks I could be antagonizing it. I told her that there's more than one, and now I have to sneak around when I want to go. I won't lie, they do frighten me. To know that something that isn't documented exists as close as an hour from my home made me purchase protection. I happen to also know of someone that had a hair-raising experience near Grandfather Mountain. I will try to seek permission from him to share with you and them to you. Thank you for taking down my information. Now that I've been listening to some podcasts and watching some documentaries on Bigfoot, I truly do enjoy the subject. Do I want another encounter? No thank you. But I am curious, and I will be listening. SK.